Welcome back into the Film Room. I'm your host, Eric Turner. Today we have our cover one Film Room feature on right tackle, Spencer Brown. He was the Bills' third-round draft pick, a guy that who wasn't supposed to play a lot of reps in year one coming from a small school. Now, he flashed in week three against the Washington football team, got his first start in week four against the Texans, and played quite well. But overall, he had an up-and-down season, which is expected coming from a small school, having that last year off because of COVID and being thrown to the wolves really in the first quarter of the season. So today we're going to take a look at a lot of the pluses and a lot of the minuses, a lot of the good and a lot of the bad. And a lot of the pluses were his athleticism and length, just his natural ability, his athleticism to get out in the space as a puller and show off that nastiness on some of those perimeter runs or on the backside of runs and hitting that cutoff defender so that the running back could cut up inside for a big gain. His length and athleticism in pass protection, which opened up the Bills' playbook and allowed them to do some things pass protection-wise that they really couldn't do with Daryl Williams because of his lack of athleticism. Some of the minuses we're going to take a look at were his hand usage, his inability to grip and lock on pass rushers so that he can maximize his athleticism to run guys around the arc, around the QB spot in the pocket. Too often, Brown's weight distribution was on his toes when he went to engage with pass rushers. So when he went to punch one-handed or two-handed, or just go to lock on, his weight distribution was too heavily on his toes. So then when defenders or pass rushers would counter him with swats and chops, he would be off balance and his feet would stop, which would negate his athleticism and speed and footwork. The other thing that he really struggled with was when pass rushers went to power. He struggled to anchor down. He really needs to improve his anchor recovery because when pass rushers went to power, he didn't have a counter or technique to go to, to anchor down, to sit down so that he could prevent the pocket from collapsing. The right tackle position accounted for 26.9% of the pressures allowed in 2021, which was the highest among all of the offensive line positions. Spencer Brown finished the 2021 season allowing 36 total pressures, one QB sack, five QB hits, and 30 QB hurries. That broke down to a 96.2 pass blocking efficiency, which is not all that good. With all things considered, even though Brown had a shaky season, the fact that he played as many reps as he did is a positive that experience is invaluable, especially when you talk some of those playoff reps. So let's jump into the film to break down some of those reps from Spencer Brown's 2021 rookie campaign. All right, let's get into some of the pluses, some of the benefits of having a big athletic offensive tackle in the lineup. Here's a short yardage situation against the Jets. And on the snap, the Jets edge defender is going to slant inside. He's going to spike inside and try to get across the face of Brown. Brown reacts. He's able to pick him up and wash him down so that Motor Singletary could get up inside for an explosive run. He was really good at the point of attack on these short yardage runs. Now, when he was asked to work double teams or combination blocks at the point of attack and then scoop to the next level with his teammates, he did a really good job. And more times than not, he was the driver. So he was the guy that was getting that sled moving. On the snap, right guard Daryl Williams gets hand leverage on that defender and then watch Brown. He's the driver. He's the one creating that displacement as they work to the second level he is driving that car and he's taking the defensive lineman into the lap of the linebacker making Darrell Williams job a little easier as motor sets up his block there for a really good gain on this run here's another example of it again Brown is the driver combination block at the point of attack Darrell Williams all he's doing is getting hand leverage something that Aaron Cromer talks about a bunch Williams gets hand leverage Brown is a driver. You see him with his pads and helmet running forward, reestablishing that line of scrimmage, washing Shepard off the D-line there so that Motor can get up inside for another really good game. All right, the last couple plays were zone runs, right? More inside zone type runs with combination blocks. Here's a double team on a gap run to the backside linebacker. And watch the awareness that Brown shows here. On the snap, they're working on Grady Jarrett. Boom, you get that sled move and you see him drive Jarrett off the line of scrimmage. They're working to the next level. Jarrett's a really good defensive tackle, one of the better defensive tackles in the league. They are able to create that displacement. But then as Allen gets up inside and Brown sees Aluokan coming from the backside free and Darrell Williams totally out of position, he's not able to pick up the backside linebacker. He releases, assuming that Josh is already up into the gap, which he is. He's already past Jarrett. Watch Brown climb to Aluokan who's coming in high and then use his long arms to get a piece of that linebacker so that Josh Allen could cut it back up inside of Brown. Just great awareness. 
Very good power at the point of attack by Brown. Getting that sled moving, climbing to a Luacon at the second level, and then picking him up so that Josh Allen could tack on a few more yards to end this run. Here's another play at the point of attack with Spencer Brown leading the charge here. Another double team at the point of attack, this time on Jerron Reed, and they're working to the backside linebacker, but the backside linebacker vacates. You can see Daryl Williams looking in this direction at Hitchens, but Hitchens is exiting the box with the eye candy in Isaiah McKenzie. So the guard and tackle, Williams and Brown, continue to create that displacement on the defensive tackle. They work all the way to Tyron Matthew, and Allen's able to get up inside for the touchdown. This is what you want from your big offensive tackle and big guard for that matter. Create that displacement at the point of attack, dig out that defensive tackle, that talented defensive tackle, reestablish a line of scrimmage for the offense, and get into the end zone against the Chiefs here at Arrowhead Stadium. Now let's get into some plays where his long arms and hand usage really helped him in the run game, especially when the Bills wanted to run their pin and pull runs and get the ball to the perimeter. On the snap, you're going to see him punch out with both hands, the right hand right there to protect the C-gap to help Dawson Knox if that defender wanted to spike inside, but more importantly, that left hand. Watch how he uses that left hand as another set of eyes, really, to get a piece of the body on that defensive tackle and then the positional leverage once again. Positional leverage right there to seal off the hole so that Singletary could get upfield for the explosive run against the Bucks. Here's an example from the Falcons game. Again, working on these down blocks at the point of attack. These down blocks so that the Bills can get outside of the tackle box. On this play, the defender does a much better job of recognizing the run and the concept. You see him try to retrace over the top of Brown, but Brown works so much into that defender with power he overwhelms him and he's able to get his hips to the front side of that defender right there you see him sealed off and josh allen is upfield for another good gain back to the bucks game another down block on a gap type run this time on sue just a tremendous block look at the explosiveness out of his stance the hand usage and the force on sue at the point of attack he walls him off, doesn't let, let him work over the top as Breedy gets up inside for a few yards. On to some more plays that highlight his athleticism and range, especially on the backside of runs. This is where I think he will benefit the most from Ken Dorsey taking over and integrating Aaron Cromer's system and techniques into the offense. He has the range on the backside of these runs to get the cutback defender. The defender responsible for any type of cutback run like Hitchens is here. You see him get a piece of Hitchens so that Allen can get up inside for a really big run in week five. Here's another example. Him and Williams work in the combination block on the zone run. And on this split flow run, you're going to see him engage 98 and just stay engaged and run with him. That's what linemen are supposed to do on these zone type runs. Get engaged, get him running horizontally so that the running back can cut it back just like you see the running back do here. Here's another example of it. With Brown in a two-point stance, Bill's running another QB keeper to the defense's right. Watch Brown take the angle to 56, the linebacker, the Chiefs, and stay engaged. Now, he's creating that displacement horizontally. He is running with him so that Josh Allen can cut it back. And Josh Allen probably doesn't break this tackle after jumping over those two defenders right there. He probably doesn't break this tackle if Brown isn't engaged with that linebacker, that linebacker probably has a free shot on Josh as he is finishing this jump. But instead, Brown washes him down and Josh is able to break that tackle for more yardage. So here are a couple more plays of Spencer Brown executing zone type runs. Look at the explosiveness out of the stance here against the Jets. Works through that play side shoulder, that play side number, gets that positional leverage and then cuts the defender. Here's another example from the same game, explosive off the snap and then he is able to seal his gap and seal his defender on this play, reach him and lock him out so that that defender cannot make a play on the ball. There are going to be times where Brown is not going to be able to reach that defender or seal that block. This is one of those occasions with the linebacker rushing this B gap right here. So Brown goes to a really good counter. He knows he's not going to be able to work to the play side number, play side armpit of this defender so what does he do he works to the backside of him he executes a slingshot or a backdoor 
So instead of working front side, he's going to go around the back side to seal this guy off by pulling on him just a little bit and then getting positional leverage on the other side of that defender just enough so that that defender can't make a play at the line of scrimmage. Here's another example of this, this time on a defensive tackle. Deron Reed is slanting into that B gap. There's no way that Brown's going to get to the play side number of him. So what does he do? Throws him by, executes that slingshot, and then perfectly seals him off right there. Just beautiful work and good technique. A really complex technique used by a lot of veterans across the league. And it's used by a young right tackle, a guy who was not supposed to start early in his career. The Bills got the ball on the perimeter in a number of different ways. But their most success came on these type of plays where they had a tight end or wide receiver executing a crack block on an edge defender and getting Brown out into space like you see here against the Patriots. Josh Allen is able to get up the field because of the pull and block by Spencer Brown. Here's another version of it in the red zone, in the low red zone against the Falcons. Another play where Knox is executing a crack block on the edge defender and Brown is using that athleticism and that power to unfurl those hips and knock the Falcons defender into the end zone as Josh trots in for a touchdown. I like his recognition on this play here as Duggar tries to shoot the gap there. 23 tries shooting the gap. Brown realizes that there's no one out in front to go block and that he's got a guy shooting the gap so he picks him up and that springs McKenzie for another really nice run. Another crack block and pull from Brown against the Jets. Nice block by Knox. Here comes the athletic tackle out in space on the Jets defender. It was on these type of plays that we saw the nastiness that Brown brings to the Bills offensive line. Dawson Knox doesn't need help there with that defender becoming the contained player, so he goes and finds work and finishes off this block. On this play against the Bucks, you're gonna see a twofer. You're gonna get two down blocks at the point of attack, one by Dawkins, one by Bates. You get Brown pulling, and Brown just wipes out Devin White and even gets a piece of Levante David there, allowing Josh Allen to cut it back. He got a hold of two of the better linebackers in the league, out in space, on the run, and it helped Josh Allen get a few yards. But I think it was this pull, this run out to the perimeter against the Jets that I think everyone remembers. Gabriel Davis with the crack block on the edge defender, lets Brown get out in space, and he eliminates that Jets defender. That defender does not stand a chance in space against the big offensive tackle. Brown registers the pancake. The Bills register six on the scoreboard. Brown's athleticism wasn't just on display as a run blocker, but also in pass blocking and pass protections. It allowed the Bills to run some different things that Darrell Williams couldn't execute because of the lack of athleticism. It allowed Josh Allen to let those plays develop down the field because Spencer Brown could stay with those speed rushers, cover up those rushers so that Josh could push the ball down the field like you see here against the Chiefs. And for a young guy, he had great recognition. You guys remember this play against the Patriots where Josh extended a play for 9.6 seconds. Look at Brown. Look at him try to find work, recognize that Josh wants to escape the pocket, gets a piece of KVN so that Josh can get outside the pocket, does it again right there, peels KVN off of Josh Allen, and Josh is able to find Dawson Knox accidentally in the back of the end zone. And when I talk about Brown executing some things physically that Williams couldn't, here's a prime example. So on the snap, Brown has to be aware of Hightower and KVN. One of those two guys are probably going to be rushing the quarterback, and he has to pick him up. On the snap, he recognizes that KVN isn't rushing, that he has motor. So now you see this gap with this slide to the left. You see the gap for Hightower to exploit. But because of the athleticism and the power step, so he's power stepping with that right foot and sliding down the line of scrimmage to pick up Hightower, that's something that Williams is not able to do. And look how he stays square. That's the most important part. Look at how he stays square and picks up Hightower, lets Josh go through his reads and eventually squirt out of the pocket for an explosive run on Matt Judon. Here's another example from the Jets game. You're going to have both defenders at the line of scrimmage slant inside and have the Jets rush a slot corner off the edge. Watch Brown here. 
He helps Daryl Williams secure the edge defender right there and then uses his long arms to get a piece of that slot rusher. Sends him right to the turf. Great recognition, but this also highlights his athleticism and length on the play. All right, it's time to get into some of the minuses, some of the negatives of Brown's play in his rookie season. And a lot of that had to do with his hands and inability to lock on pass rushers, especially some of the elite competition guys like Frank Clark on this play. Nice explosiveness out of his stance here, but then you're gonna see him not lock on to Clark. And when he punches, something you're gonna see a bunch of on this film is when he punches out one or two handed, when he's trying to engage, a lot of his weight is on his toes. That spin move inside is too easy for Clark, but Josh is able to extend the play and the ball falls incomplete. Same game, this is another play where the hands of Brown are too slow and he has no control of Chris Jones on this play. Watch him punch out with that outside hand. Jones sees it from a mile away, is able to grab it and then just collapse the width of that pocket on Josh Allen. Luckily, Josh Allen had good pocket presence. He climbed just a bit so he could get rid of the ball to his wide receiver. I think on this play, Brown's head is in the right place. He's expecting a power move, maybe a long arm. You see him kind of right there go to chop down that right arm of Melvin Ingram. But Ingram transitions to power, speed to power, and Brown is not able to engage and stay locked on and just ride him wide of Josh Allen's spot. With no control over Ingram, Ingram disengages and makes a play on Josh Allen. This was just a bad set, which from time to time he'll have these. Oversets just a little bit. Slow hands. They're swatted away from that Jets defender. That Jets defender gets the inside lane to the quarterback, which as you can see with everyone sliding left is a big deal. So they isolated Brown on this play. That rusher does a great job against Brown here and did a great job against him the entire game. He gets the inside lane, but Josh is able to get rid of the ball. Another play from the Jets game, slow hands, and as I said earlier, when he punches out and when he goes to engage, look at his hips pop up and his weight is distributed on his toes. So when guys counter him and swat his hands away or chop his hands down like that, he's thrown off balance, which stops his feet, his biggest asset, and allows that defender to get outside, but Thankfully, as I've said already in a couple of these clips, Josh Allen extends a play, breaks a tackle, and turns this into a touchdown. For most of this game, Brown was up against Shaq Barrett, but this time they put Jason Pierre-Paul against him, and Brown doesn't quite understand what he brings as a pass rusher. So he oversets, and JPP just swims him inside. You see with a really powerful, explosive club to the back of Brown, he's able to pressure Josh Allen, but Josh Allen extends a play and gets rid of the ball. Another play from the Bucks game, again, against elite competition, Brown struggled, and rightfully so. Slow hands, weight on his toes. I mean, look at him punch out, and Barrett just sets him up beautifully. A little hezzy rush outside, cross chop, pins it, and is able to pressure Josh Allen. Josh Allen is forced to get rid of it under duress, and it's intercepted. Here's a bad angle on his set against a speed rusher out wide. Bad angle, he's behind the eight ball now. Barrett has the half man relationship one. Brown doesn't have the hands to lock on. His feet stop and he pressures Josh Allen and brings him down for the sack. For the most part, Spencer Brown did a good job of maintaining the half man relationship. Most of his sets were good angles. He kept himself between the pass rusher and the quarterback for the most part. But defenders started going to power moves, so speed to power, and that's when they really had an effect on the Bills offense and Josh Allen. Now, there were times like on this play where Josh Allen got rid of the ball. It was no thanks to Spencer Brown. Pass rusher to Jets goes speed to power, goes right through him, which is the quickest line to the quarterback, but Josh is able to get rid of the ball. Here he is at left tackle, which he started earlier in this game against the Patriots. Again, KVN, power move. Hands are outside, chest exposed. No counters to anchor down. And that allows KVN to collapse the pocket. But again, Josh is in rhythm. He gets rid of the ball. 
pass rushers loved to go to power. Here, Ingram obliterates Spencer Brown there. And it was in this point in the game, in the divisional matchup, where Josh knew that the pass rushers on the edge were winning. And he had to not only keep his eyes downfield, but also evade pass rushers like he does here. This was a fourth down play. And again, this was a big play from Josh Allen. No thanks to Spencer Brown because Ingram manhandled him. Another player from the Jets game. He's at right tackle. Power move from that defender. You see him working through Brown. Brown is overwhelmed. He doesn't have a counter to anchor down. He can't sit. He doesn't have the strength or technique to sit down. But Josh is able to get rid of the ball. Once again, here at right tackle, just washed on that play. Just completely walks through Spencer Brown with a power move. He's just got to get better at anchoring down. He's got to come up with a counter. He's got to be able to sit down in a chair. Use a double under move. Get those hands inside. Lock out those arms and sit down. He's got to come up with a counter because pass rushers are going to keep going to these power moves. And Josh Allen's not going to be able to bail him out as often as he did last year. And I got to give him some credit because he understood and his coaches understood how teams and pass rushers were going to attack him. And he did have some counters, not many. He just needs to get more consistent with it and hide it a little better. So here you're going to see him with wide hands. That guy goes to power. That guy's helping to collapse the width of the pocket. And all he does is lift that arm up. That takes away the leverage from that pass rusher. Josh Allen escapes the pocket, makes a big play down the field. Here's another one from the Chiefs game. You see him. Long arm from Clark. What's he do? Just lifts it up. Then he maintains his positioning, re-engages, and locks him down. So very good recovery there in counter from Brown. Here's another rep versus Clark. Clark comes with that quick long arm. You see the left arm of Brown just lift it up and take away that leverage. Another rep from the Jets game. Guy comes with the long arm. What does Brown do? Boom, chops it down. Then regains position and runs him wide of the pocket as Josh Allen is getting rid of the ball. Here's a rep versus the Patriots. KVN's rushing. He comes with power. Quick pull down. Snatch trap right there from Brown. It's in his arsenal. He just needs to refine it a little more so that doesn't look like a hold but that one was a quick snatch trap on KVN as the ball was released here's a rep from the Bucks game versus Barrett you remember this that cross chop and pressure leading to the interception like I said I'll give Brown credit he battled he just needs to be more consistent same game he doesn't even let Barrett set him up see the left hand right there as Barrett is flashing that right arm to make it look like a long arm's coming. Probably going to dip under Brown here, but the quick hands of Brown chops that down and it allows Josh Allen to get rid of the ball. A couple more snatch traps on film here. Engaged. Watch him with that left hand. Grab some cloth and pull him down. This is what I'm talking about. You're going to get called for a hold from time to time on this. He needs to get better at this move because teams and pass rushers are going to use it. He just needs to refine his snatch traps and not pull on the jersey so much. That's a little more subtle. Engaged with Clark. See him pull down on both the arms, not the jersey. He lets go of the jersey, and then he chops down on those arms and pulls them. That's a little more subtle. That's not going to get called. Long arm from Clark. And you see him pull down on that arm. And it brings Clark down towards the end of the game. Here's another rep from the Jets game. I like this rep too. They're engaged. See that defender trying to transition. Brown stays with him, runs the hoop. And then watch, boom, quick hands right there. 
boom, brings him down and finishes. Here was a game by the Bucks. So you see Brown squeeze inside, pick up Golston, and then watch that left hand right there. Golston is trying to maintain control on Brown with that right arm, right hand in the chest of Brown. He feels it, he recognizes it, he disengages. Nice set versus Barrett. See the long arm, got him at length, got the jersey right there. Not a bad play right there. That's hidden really well. And it's so quick. Another rep versus the Patriots and KVN. Boom, right there. Nice snatch trap. Drop on top of him. I mean, that's damn near textbook. Guy wants to come with power, get under your pads, chop him down. Another strong rep versus KVN. Into the body of Brown. And then chops him down. I like this one because he's got his left hand locked on where it needs to be. Really good placement. And then he comes with his right hand to chop down KVN. So that Josh can throw it downfield for the big play. Thanks for tuning in to that breakdown of Spencer Brown's rookie season. Make sure to hit that like button, leave us a comment, and tell your family and friends about what we have going on at Cover One. And make sure you're following us on all social media platforms. We provide content on other platforms that you won't find on YouTube. This has been another Cover One Film Room feature hosted by myself, Eric Turner. Thanks for tuning in. Go Bills.